Welcome to my video where I'll be talking about some home remedies for use to get over a cold. I kind of have a little cold right now, so excuse me if I sound a little sore. Anyways, my name is Dr. Cheng Ron. I'm an internal medicine doctor, primary care doctor in Houston, Texas. And I just want to share with you some value of what I know. So, uh, first things first, uh, let's start with what exactly is a cold. Okay, a cold is basically what we call a upper respiratory tract infection. The respiratory tract is um, the airways that we breathe into, and there's the upper section, which is right here, and the lower section, which is in the lungs right here. So upper respiratory tract infection is um, in the airway that's in the upper airway from your mouth and your nose all the way down to what's called your bronchus. And a lower respiratory tract infection is what we call pneumonia, for example. And so, uh, since a cold is an upper respiratory tract infection, um, we treat it a little differently than a pneumonia, which is a lower respiratory tract infection. So, a cold is most commonly caused by a virus, okay? And which means that you don't need antibiotics for a virus. You do not need antibiotics for most of the common colds that are out there. And if you don't know if you have uh, a bacteria or a viral infection, then you go to your doctor and you ask him or her, do I need antibiotics, okay? But here's some common remedies that I think that you should start um, before you go to your doctor. All right. First, um, I like to say that we, we should use food as medicine. We should always use food as medicine, which means that um, when you're sick, your body needs nourishment. And how you're going to nourish your body is to avoid the toxins that you put into your body and then put in all the good stuff. So what are toxins? Toxins are all the stuff that you think is bad for you. Uh, like fried foods, for example, processed foods, and stuff like that. And um, the fresh foods and the things that are going to be good for your body and that are nutritious, you should be eating during that time. However, most people do the opposite. A lot of times people feel bad and just want to sit on the couch with a tub of ice cream and watch movies. Okay, uh, Not the best for you if you're trying to get over any sort of infection. Because you want to boost your immune system. Your immune system needs to be ready to fight off the viral infection. So, um, once again, just eat clean. Eat clean. That's number one. Number two, you have to understand that when a virus goes through you, it's going to take its time and take its course. Okay? So, sometimes it could be a short course, and sometimes it could be a longer course. And... The length of the course is determined solely by how we behave to ourselves and what we put into our body. So um, you've probably heard that vitamin C and zinc uh, together, um, and it's in a lot of different products out there that's packaged together. Um, these two products can shorten the, the length of an infection, and that's, that's shown to be true. Um, so, where do you get vitamin C and zinc? You can get it pretty much from any store, your Walgreens or CVS or Walmart or Sam's or whichever it is that you go to. And there's different branded packaging, like Airborne is one of the ones that I use. Uh, Airborne is, is, is vitamin C and zinc in it, and it dissolves, and, and actually it's, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> so, one is to eat clean, two, vitamin C and zinc. Three is well, let's support our symptoms. Let's say if I have a runny nose, um, and then I would have to blow my nose, right? And to, to blow my nose, it can be a very uncomfortable thing, uh, especially when you blow your nose and you wipe and you leave um, marks right here, which kind of hurt. But blowing your nose is actually, um, you have to do it right. <laughs> and so, and it's it's not like, like real hard it's not that's not how you blow your nose uh, you, you want to blow it gently and you want to wipe gently just let the mucus come out of your nose um, <laughs> but don't don't take a deep breath and go <sighs> why because if you do that not only are stuff coming out of your nose but you're also 
opening up a channel between the back of your uh, nose and your middle ear and blowing snot into your middle ear and it can cause an ear infection as well and we just don't we, we, we don't want that so blow your nose gently okay i used to make that mistake a long time ago and i used to i used to be like ah why do my ears feel so full after i blow my nose and it's just not a pleasant feeling all right uh, next up is, um, let's talk about your throat. If you have a sore throat, um, I love gargling with salt water and I actually use hot water to, to gargle because it actually feels better for me. It's soothing. It brings my, it brings my inflammation of my throat down. It's real soothing. Um, and if you're able to tolerate, uh, salt water, you can swallow it if you want to, but most people, if I recommend for you to just gargle. I personally swallow it because I don't mind the taste and plus it goes down my esophagus to the back of my throat and feels pretty nice for me. So, um, and some people are thinking that's disgusting. Why would you swallow salt water? Don't you just swallow the, the, the bugs that's, that's in here? Yeah, the bugs and the virus that's, that's up in here cannot survive in your stomach environment. So it's, it's still okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, stay inside, stay warm, uh, drink hot liquids. You just want to make yourself be nice and warm, especially if you have a low-grade fever. Um, fevers are actually good for the body. The reason why your body has a fever in the first place is that your brain raises the body temperature so that there's more interaction between your body's immune system and the, the bug or the pathogen, as we call it. And if the and so if there's more interaction, then um, you'll get over it quickly. So a lot of people I know, um, especially since if um, if they have like even a small fever, they try to make themselves cooler or colder with a cold towel. And I don't suggest doing that because your body is warm for a reason, right? The only time I do suggest if you want to bring your body temperature down is if you spike a high fever, then you do want to bring your body temperature down because a lot of high fevers can cause uh, brain damage and organ damage and all sorts of things. But generally with a common cold, you're not going to have a high fever. If you do spike a high fever, a fever over 102, then you should definitely go to your doctor as soon as possible. But go to your doctor anyway, so let them check you out or let her check you out, okay? Um, another piece of advice is to, um, take a hot shower and if you take a hot shower, it, it produces a lot of steam and you can inhale that steam and it's nice and humid and, it, and it just makes you feel better. Um, when I, what I like to do is that, um, I like to bundle myself up if I have a low grade fever and I, I naturally bring my body temperature up enough to where it can fight off a lot of the virus. And then my brain will tell me, hey, you're done being hot. It's time to cool down now because your, your virus is being battled just fine. And then you'll start sweating a little bit. The minute you start sweating, you know that you're trying, you're quote unquote breaking the fever. The act of breaking the fever is actually your body telling you, you don't need that high of a body temperature now, you're okay. At that time, after you broke the fever is when I suggest you take a steamy hot shower. Uh, because one, you feel better, and two, if you take a steamy hot shower even while you have a low-grade fever, uh, a lot of times after the shower you come out and the water evaporates off your skin, your body temperature actually drops a little bit. And then your body may say, hey, we're not ready for your temperature to drop. We want the temperature to go back up. So you'll probably spike another fever later on. It's just the way that the body works. Okay. Um, so I talked about... I talked about um, fevers, I talked about uh, nasal congestion, I talked about sore throat, and um, I did not talk about the feeling of malaise. So malaise is a feeling that you just feel really bad, that just really unexplicable bad feeling. Um, that unexplicable bad feeling is just your body's immune system being overactive. Uh, to fight off the infection and you feel bad because the body wants you to rest so listen to the body and just just rest and relax you know don't power through it there's no reason to power through it so that that bad feeling is what we call malaise m-a-l-a-i-s-e 
And that sensation of malaise can only be better if um, your fever becomes better or if you get over the virus. And that's the only way. There's no uh, necessarily any um, natural remedies for that except just keep yourself eating clean, drink warm soups, um, don't drink, don't drink or eat anything processed. That's that. That is number one. Okay, and eat real clean during that time. Make yourself, make sure that you're nourished. All right. Um, I would say the most important factor for malaise is how hydrated you are. I think the more hydrated you are, the, the less malaise you are. So how do you hydrate yourself? Well, you drink water. So. A lot of times people think that, you know, I think I drink plenty of water, but I still feel bad. But actually, when you're sick, you, you actually lose a lot more water in your body. And the way you lose it is that when you're sick, you breathe heavier and deeper. Every time you exhale out, you're losing a lot of moisture from your body. <sighs> the exhale out, when you, you feel on your hand or if you, you exhale on a window, right, that window fogs up. That fogging process is actually... Um, a lot of moisture coming from inside your body. So the higher your breathing that you're, the higher your respiratory rate, the more you release this water. Um, and if you have fevers for every degree uh, centigrade that you go up in your fever, you can potentially lose 20% of your total body water more than if you had normal temperature over the span of a day. Which means that you need to be replacing that water and gaining more water. So my tip for water and hydration to prevent that malaise, to prevent that icky feeling, is to drink until your urine starts running almost perfectly clear, like a light yellow. Um, reason for that is that that's also your body telling you that, hey, I'm staying well hydrated. And that's going to shorten your course of the cold, and that's going to make you feel a whole lot better, and that malaise won't stick with you as much. So, um... I hope you guys gain a lot of value out of this. I, um, I, I hope that you will continue to gain value of all the things that I say. And if you want to know about anything else, want me to make a video about anything else medical, feel free to leave it in the comments and I will see that I get right to it. Okay, so um, if, you have, if you want to know more about me, I do have my website, ronmd.com. It's R-U-A-N-M-D.com. Check me out over there. Check out my blogs and everything. And I will talk to you guys soon. Okay? Thanks a lot, people.